We got first and last names of six witches that are in our church. And you know what's strange? Three of you are in this room right now. Hey everybody, it is I, Gary Schumacher, and welcome to another fabulous episode of Heretic Hump Day. We have yet another wild ride here for you all today. So hop aboard my camel. Her name is Dixie. Strap yourself in and come with me for another wild ride here on Heretic Hump Day. We got first and last names of six witches that are in our church. And you know what's strange? Three of you are in this room right now. Three of you in the room right now. You better look in my eyeballs. We ain't afraid of you, you stinking witch. I had to jump right into this one, folks. I had one of his so-called witches on my recent live stream, and I assure you, she is no witch. Check this out. And I had a seat in the second row right behind Greg Locke and Ty, and they took my seat away. And I had to sit in the back of the tent. And then people that I was, you know, with and friends, and nobody would even acknowledge me. And I knew something was wrong until one person told me, they're like, we, we don't want you near me because they... Um, Greg Locke and, and the crew told me that you're a witch and and that you're not, I'm not allowed to be with you. And I'm like, and, and then I heard it again. So then I'm like, all right, you know, and I was praying to the Lord. I'm like, okay, what am I going to do? And I stuck it out for the whole, you know, the whole service and left. And then I went back, and I went back Wednesday night. I'm like, you know, I'm going to see if I can confront Greg and Ty. And that never happened. Here I was stuck in the back of the tent again. Nobody would speak to me or anything. And then that's when I started getting phone calls. They're like, yeah, we're not allowed to get near you. You're a witch. And if, you're, if you're a witch, why does he want you in his church at all? Why doesn't he just sit, sit you in the back? Because I, I think they were a little bit threatened because of my husband. Oh, okay. You know, being part of, you know, the security and, you know, and him being, you know, um, retired. Oh, so you're, you're a witch, but, it's, but your husband works security, so they can still use him. Yeah. Just put the witch in the back of the church. Yeah. You devil worshiping Satanist witch. We cast you out in the name of Jesus Christ. We break your spells. We break your curse. We got your first name. We got your last name. We even got an address for one of you. Yeah. You so much as cough wrong, and I'll expose you in front of everybody in this tent, you stinking witch. You spell-casting, pharmakia, devil-worshiping mongrel, you. You were sent to this church to destroy us. You were sent to this church to lure us in. You were sent to this church to cast spell. Listen, some of you been sick because you befriended that witch. And I'm going to go ahead and serve notice on you right now. Don't move. I'm in the mood. Two of you in my wife's latest Bible study, and you know who you are, and we're going to ask you to get out. So, yeah, that's Greg Locke calling out Jamie Price Willis for being one of his witches in his church. The only reason she was branded a witch by him was that she was praying over people in his congregation. Greg Locke will not share his spotlight with anyone if they take an ounce of his glory especially a woman then you are branded a witch and ostracized and put in a corner because even so-called witches i guess can still tithe because that's what it's all about right greg that making the money you won't kick her out of your church 
because she could still she's still brainwashed enough at this point to keep giving you money and even though you're up there screaming and hollering and ranting and raving that these people are witches because they didn't conform to you they could still throw money in the collection plate well that didn't really work for jamie too well um like i said about jamie before that that kitten's got claws and she did put up with it for a little while you know greg Locke must be a horrible pastor because he allows all these so-called witches to infiltrate his church okay what type of pastor has all these witches infiltrating his church you're supposed to be a born again christian and a man of god and you're saving and and exercising all these demons in your church but still these witches have not only infiltrated your church which i don't see how a, a witch or a demon would want to go into a house of god because i don't believe this is a house of god i think it's a house of horrors that's exactly what he's doing here he's no man of god he is nothing he is a sideshow he's a freak and christians please please listen to me get away from him get away from people like him because he's nothing but an evil satanist okay and anybody does any good like jamie was doing praying over people in the church trying to help them it it wrecked him and that's it you're gone you're ostracized sent to the back that's what she says in that clip she's sent to the back and nobody wants to go near it what is this what is this ain't old ancient times here i mean come on are you kidding me? This is how we treat people in the 21st century? This is this grift as is old as Christianity and it's still going on today. Why as Christians do we fall for this kind of nonsense? It just makes me so sad. It really does. We need to get in our Bibles, people. We really really do. This man the more research I do, the uh the worse it it becomes um and uh i was actually sent this clip today by one of my uh, subscribers and uh, i'd like to thank him for that i'm not sure if he wants me to mention his name or not but i'd like to thank you for that clip today because it really fit perfectly at what jamie was saying on my live stream if you didn't believe what jamie was saying there's proof there's Booth, and he dances around the stage in great glee, banging his microphone and just acting the fool because that's what he is. And he's fooling all you people. He just put a movie out for crying out loud. Don't go see it. Don't give this man any money. He's he's preying on you people. And I'm not using P-R-A-Y. I'm using P-R-E-Y because you are his prey and he is a demonic. That's what he is. And we all need to stay away from people like him. But we can't call witchcraft unity. We can't call the spirit of Kundalini that we call out every Sunday night unity. We cannot call someone that has said, thus saith the Lord, put God's name on the line it never came to pass and they never repented you can't call that well let's just yoke up and unify with them no 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 no. God's very clear if you say God said it but it never happens God said the first time not the tenth time you're a false prophet okay I, I allowed some mixture to creep in for the sake of thinking that we were being unified but we weren't being unified we were being stupefied I don't do a lot of this on on Sunday but I, I, I've got to take some uh, some some buckets and kind of cleanse some of the mixture that I allowed pastorally to get in the stream okay this is a guy who's now friends with Benny Hinn and I think those buckets that he's talking about he needs you to fill up with money people repent let's have unity People dig their heels in and do stupid rebuttal videos. 
I'll start naming names. Please, Greg, start naming my name. I would love nothing better than for you to start naming my names. And there are a lot of me's out there. I just went through the internet today. There are tons and tons of rebuttal videos against you and Daniel Adams, who you're getting ready to uh, trash here. On unity in the body. But uh, for a long time, I was willing to overlook certain things. By the way, okay, I've already taken my stand. If you didn't see the message, then you've missed something or you live under a rock because it's been everywhere. But so I sent Daniel a text after I preached, after he did a rebuttal statement and a rebuttal video and then deleted both of them. I, I got the text. I sent him a long one. He's talking about Daniel Adams here, by the way who is a carbon copy of him. Like I said, Greg doesn't want anyone stealing his sideshow. Long one. That's very kind. But five hours would, would probably be the timestamp. Before I posted on my Facebook, on my large Facebook page, on the public figure, five hours before I posted that I have backed out of the TSNL Forerunners Conference, because I'm not speaking there, I said... Five hours. I already had let Daniel know. So, so listen, all this phone call nonsense of people calling around, we had no idea he was going to post that. That is bunk. That is biblical stupidity. BS. I let it be clear and I let the reasons be very clear of why I wanted out before I ever told anybody. And I didn't even Wednesday night back out. I even said Wednesday night, as long as he'll remove EJ, then we'll, we'll be good. You remember that, right? So I sent the whole text message, the whole deal. It didn't go well. It was like a fall down the steps moment, right? And since then, video, video, post, video. Don't you love it when they start attacking each other? I mean, that is the best. And take a look at that Rolex watch on his wrist. Take a good look, people. That's where your uh, tithing money is going to, to... Uh, to enriching this man. Okay, that's cool. I don't care who your friends are. But when you double down on your support of witchcraft, when you double down on platforming a known fornicator because he's one of your spiritual mentors, I've got problems with you. So listen, I, I don't care how right tight and good night oh like your friends like Benny Hinn and Paula White what I'm about to say is I'm cleaning up some mess yeah. on our deliverance team you will be covered by the teaching of our deliverance team you will not carry the anointing and the covering of TSNL and Daniel Adams I am publicly breaking off any relationship that I have with Daniel Adams and the TSNL. I love all of them. I'm breaking it off. So uh, Greg Locke is, uh, is pretty juvenile. But uh, here's a young man here, and I want to switch gears for a moment here, that has more understanding about Scripture than Greg Locke will ever know. And I am so it's so refreshing to see a young man like this, you know, on YouTube, just belting out scripture, and he's full of common sense. Kudos to whoever this young man's parents is. His name is Jaden Forrest, okay? He is knocking it out of the park here, and I want to play a couple short clips for him because it seems that he is, uh, when I was reading here, he's got a little bit of YouTube burnout, which we all suffer from from time to time, so he's taking a little bit of a break. But I want you to support his channel. Not that he needs my help. He's got 123,000 subscribers and 75 videos. He's, he's killing it, and good, because we need this younger generation to step up because my generation seems to be dropping the ball here. Joe Rogan is changing, and if you don't know what I mean, he's gone from this. The whole thing's so stupid. Just stop and think how f***ing stupid that is. You understand, mother because the New Testament is utter horse To this. The sanctity of love and of truth, and a lot of that comes from religion. And unfortunately, a lot of very intelligent people, they dismiss all of the positive aspects of religion because they think that the stories are mere 
superstitious fairy tales that you know they they have no place in this modern world and that's not necessarily true Where are we living we need to we need jesus <laughs> <laughs> i think for real i think for real like if he came back now it'd be great like jesus if you're thinking about coming back right now now's a good time yeah, pretty soon yeah now's a good time we're kind but what's causing this change in Joe Rogan? He started humbly seeking the truth and it's leading him to Jesus. So yeah, like I said, this kid has more understanding of scripture than most adults. Um, I have another short here I wanna play for you. I mean, it, it, the, the kid is really doing a great job here. Jane confronts a preacher, but watch how he responds. Check it out. I don't need rescuing. I know my faith. I know what's in my heart. Okay, are you a Christian? Yes. Are you, is Jesus Christ the only way to get to heaven? For me? No. My... For everybody? No. No, 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 no. Is for Jesus me. the only way to get to heaven for, for everybody? Me. For me. I'm asking you to make a big decision here. No, it's that's Is my, Jesus that's the only my, way for everybody in the world? That is my big decision. For everybody. Okay, me. if you, then all I can say that's is me. anybody who believes that's that Jesus is all way, but not the way, is not a Christian. Yeah. It is not an option. Right. If you do not believe in the exclusivity of salvation through Because she laughs Christ, at him. You cannot be saved because you are saying that he's okay. not the true God. Yeah. And it's called idolatry. And you've made up a graven image inside of your noggin to suit yourself. Do not be deceived. Only Jesus can save people from hell. You're absolutely right, kid. Only Jesus can save you from hell. But unfortunately, I don't know if there's any hope for this man. Because what he has in his hand, this is uh, our friend Greg Locke again. He's holding a baseball bat and wrapped around the barrel of it. Well, I'll let him tell you. That is a Bible. That is uh, duct taped and zip tied to an Eastern ball bat. And he's... He's very proud of that. Don't, look how he struts up and down there. Just so proud of what he's done. Let me show you. I'm about to show you something crazy. Watch this. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the, watch the next phrase, pulling down of strongholds. You ought to pay attention to what the Greek word for pulling down means. And wait till you all see what he's getting ready to pull down with this baseball bat with a Bible taped around the barrel. Just wait to see what he pulls down. It's the word demolition. That's what it means. It doesn't just mean, well, you know, I'm just going to pull it. Uh, 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 uh. It means you demolish the house that the evil spirit left when you kicked it out. So maybe at our Global Vision store, we ought to start selling some Bible bats in the name of Jesus. Because what some of you need to understand is you've been delivered from a demon, but you've not pulled down the stronghold yet. You got to get rid of the triggers on that iPhone. You got to get rid of the triggers on that Netflix. You got to lose her number. You got to lose his number. The demon comes out when you expel it. The stronghold comes down when you demolish it with the Bible. What a man there, huh? What a man smashing up Barbie's dream house with a baseball bat with the word of God taped around the barrel. This is the most pathetic display I have ever seen of any pastor in my life. You gotta start tearing that mess up. You gotta break it down. You gotta cast down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself. You gotta get in the Bible and beat that stronghold to death. What did that prove? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing that proved. You know, it proves that he could smash up a Barbie dream house with a baseball bat. The guy is out of his mind. 
Listen, if anybody actually cares for this guy, you need to get him in some kind of drug rehabilitation program because he's obviously on some kind of, I don't know what kind of, maybe, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with him, but he needs some serious help, this guy. You know, that proved absolutely nothing. That proves you can blaspheme the Bible, disrespecting the scripture, something that you're supposed to love and cherish, a Bible, and you duct tape it to a baseball bat and smash a Barbie dream house with it. What is that supposed to symbolize? I have no idea. Here, I can take my friend here. Hey, hey, look, it's my friend. I'm going to... Uh, that uh, 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 uh. uh, symbolize nothing. Okay, I could have beat this guy with a bat. It wouldn't have made any difference. But I'm sure not going to beat him with a Bible. I mean, give me a break. Oh, and there's people. I have a headache. I have a headache. Oh, I need. I need. Oh, okay. All right, I'm back. Listen, I sit through hours and hours and hours of this stuff. And it, it, after a while, it wears on you. I mean, you have no idea, you folks out there, how many hours of this nonsense that I have to sit through Drew in Alabama and CCC and Laura from Magical Mystery Church and um, to, to bring you this stuff. And it, it does, it just wears on you the the absolute stupidity of these people and i just don't understand the people in the audience now, i noticed a little bit around you know when they were showing some shots of the audience there wasn't a lot of people there which was a good thing so i don't know if they're using a uh like a, like they used to use in the old sitcoms a laugh track but a cheer track but for the people that are there man they were pumped up about it they were loving everything he was doing and uh guys, come on it's blasphemy it's just blasphemy and the reason why i showed you that young man he's a hundred a thousand times the preacher that greg is and he's going to grow up to be something special he's going to be a child of god i can feel it um he's doing a great job and uh i hope he keeps it up that's what I want to prove. That's what, that's what I was trying to show there with that cutaway. I'm trying to show you that even a young boy like that has more sense than a grown man who beats up Barbie dream houses in front of a congregation of screaming lunatic fans. That's all they are. They're fans. They're not Christians. They love this guy. He's their Bon Jovi. He's their Bruce Springsteen. He's all these things. He's their Elvis. He's their Chuck Berry for all you from you people that go way back. That's all he is. He ain't nothing but a rock star. And they're gonna scream and holler and throw money at him. And you know, God didn't want preachers to be rock stars and live in giant mansions. I mean, I'm sure this guy can afford himself a Graceland or a, wherever Michael Jackson lives, Dream Dreamland or whatever. I can't. Remember. I remember Mary Michael Jackson's house, but I'm sure wherever he lives is a house of horrors because that man has no, not one iota about what it's like to love Jesus Christ. You don't go up there and make a sideshow of scripture like that. You're, you're disrespecting scripture. You don't take this book right here. You don't take this book and you don't uh, tap, strap it to a baseball bat. You know, this is, you're supposed to love every single word that's in this book. You don't defame it like this. He might as well have just taken it out and burned it. And that's another thing that he does. He's very, excuse me, he's very into these book burning things, just like the Nazis used to do. This is what he does. He has these big bonfires where you're supposed to throw books in that, that he deems that aren't fit for people to read. This is what the Nazis did. And this is what this guy's up to. This man is a cult leader. Mark my words. 
And that's why I had Jamie Price with us on. Um, because she, even though she was part of his troop or whatever you want to call him, she's still going to get close to him. She wasn't part of his inner circle. She was right around the fringe. Okay. And even that, you know, the wife says, she's a witch. And what's he do? Goes up on stage screaming like a banshee that she's a witch and anyone associated with her. And that, my friends, is not a true man of God. That is not even close to being a true man of God. I don't know. I just don't know what to do with, uh, with this. I mean, it's very disheartening. And more of these pop up every single day. And um, I don't know. I'm just out here trying to bring people back to Christ one Christian at a time. One Christian at a time. That's it. That's all I want to do. One Christian at a time. And please, if you are following this man, okay, please email me. I have my email in the description below. Email me and let me know why, because I would love to know why. You're being deceived. You're being deceived by Satan if you're following this man. This man wouldn't know a Christian if it bit him. Okay. He wouldn't know. And, and that's the other thing about some of these people. They do know their scripture, like Kenneth Copeland and um, even um, Chris McDonald. They, they, know, they know their scripture because that is, this is their business. This is their grift. This is their scam. And But mostly, 90% of the time, they're putting out false doctrine. And I always say it. Sprinkle a little scripture in there. See if it passes smell test. Well, it doesn't pass the smell test. Not for me. All right. I love all you people that come out here and watch my sh programs twice a week. I have grown very, very fond of all of you, and we are a very close knit group. If you're new to my channel, please like and subscribe because it does help the algorithm. And we really need your help to spread this word because this type of thing is getting worse in Christianity every day. You know, you don't see Jews out there doing this. You don't see Muslims out there doing this. It's Christians that are out there being scammed like this. And you want to know why? Because we are with God and Satan hates that. We're right. The only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ. And Satan hates that. He goes after the Christians. And that is why. So. Sorry, I went off on a tirade there. So what this is, is a complete sideshow, really. Um, this is theater, really theater, plain and simple. Greg Locke is the ringleader and the master heretic of ceremonies. Uh, demonic can't remove demonic. And replace, all it does is replace it with more demonic. Please read your Bibles, please. Because if you get into this book right here, if you get into this book, it will remove the scales from your eyes. I promise you, it will remove the scales from your eyes. I want to read a little scripture here. This is the, from the book of Matthew, excuse me, chapter 12. Now this is the King James, and I usually don't roll with King James, but <laughs> I, uh, so bear with me here, okay? Uh, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from which I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwelleth there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. So shall it be also unto this wicked generation. And this generation is wicked. But let me just, I'll use myself as an example, because this, this really speaks to me here. 
years ago when I was a teenager, teenagers are, do stupid things, and I did. I started smoking. I started smoking cigarettes when I was about 16 years old. Okay, and by the time I got to my early 20s, I was addicted to smoking pretty much. You know, I was about a pack a day habit. So um, once I got to my early 30s, I realized I, I don't want to do this anymore. And so I quit smoking. And it was very, very difficult, you know, to have an addiction and try to kick it, you know. And I, and I resided myself to the fact because I had tried quitting smoking, you know, before that and failed. Because I used to say to myself, wow, I've been doing good. I haven't had a cigarette in like three weeks. I'll have one cigarette. What's that going to hurt? It's going to hurt because one cigarette leads to two. Two cigarettes lead to four. Four cigarettes lead to eight and on and on and on. And then what I'm saying is, is that when you are addicted to something like that, you got to put it down forever. Never go back to it again. And if you're sinning, you need to put those sins down and never go back to it again. Don't go to some crazy fool like Greg um, and let him think that he can wave his magic wand over you and get rid of your demons. You have to get rid of your demons. You ask God for help, and he will help you. I prayed God to help me quit smoking, and he did. I did not need a Greg Locke to do it for me. Okay, and that's what people don't understand. And they gather in droves to enrich this man. Greg Locke's not doing anything for them. And I hear these people say, oh, I've seen demons come out of this. No, you see people that wanted to change their lives and did. They didn't need Greg Locke to do it for them. They had the whole thing inside of them themselves because some people have the Holy Spirit inside of them and some people don't. Okay, that is that. And um, I hope I made some sense there. I really hope I did. So um, I want to end this tonight with a prayer. Um, God bless every one of you. And thank you so much for supporting my channel. I really do appreciate this. Um, my channel has really grown in the short time that I've been on YouTube. And I greatly appreciate God bless every single one of you. So let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father. Thank you for blessing us with another day and opening our eyes this morning and having us face the new day. We all look forward to your return, Lord, though. So, Lord, please stop these false teachers, these false prophets, and these people that's just built the body of Christ. Have them repent. And shut down these ministries and give back what they've stolen. And Lord, God bless everyone within the sound of my voice. And I pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, peoples, I will be seeing you again. I hope you enjoyed my latest Heretic Hump Day. And uh, sorry, this light's got in my eye. <laughs> I love you all. God bless you. You guys take care. Have a great one. Bye-bye now. <laughs>